So today we are going to discuss the effectiveness of a prism in just uh, five to eight minutes, that's it. So what is actually the prism here? If you take the cross section of a prism, it will appear to be like this. So this is a prism ABC, if you consider, a line PQ enters, it enters from rarer to denser, it bends towards a normal, this is going to be normal N1, N2. When a light ray enters from rarer to denser, it bends towards a normal. And if it enters from denser to rarer, it bends away from the normal. So here it is bending towards the normal because this is a normal. When it comes outside, it bends away from the normal. Okay, so uh, let us see here what is going to happen. It bends away from the normal. This is angle of incidence I1. This is angle of emergence I2. This is uh, refracting angle R1 and this is refracting angle R2. So actually the light ray has to go like this, but it is going like this. And this why we will consider delta as angle of deviation. That's it. So let us uh, do this problem in just three steps. Do this, uh, explain this concept in just three steps. So let us take the first step, that is step one. So in this step one, we will consider a triangle QER. So a triangle QER. So triangle QER, if you observe, you will find that R1 plus R2 plus E is going to be 180 degrees. Okay. Is going to be 180 degrees here. Now you can write R1 plus R2 is equal to 180 minus E. Let us imagine this is going to be equation number one. So this is the first step we are getting. Now let us go ahead with the step two. So in this step two, we will consider triangle QDR. Triangle QDR, if you observe, you will understand that delta is equal to I1 minus R1 plus I2 minus R2. What is the concept here actually? Exterior angle is equal to sum of interior opposite angles. This is an exterior angle and these two are sum of interior opposite angles. So that's why we write exterior angle is equal to sum of interior opposite angles. So, okay. So this is the identity. Then after that we can write I1 plus I2 is equal to minus if you common out here you will be getting R1 plus R2, okay? So let us imagine this to be equation number two. So two steps are over. That is the final step is step number three here. In this third step, you will consider in a quadrilateral A, Q, E, R, A, Q, E, R, A. So in this quadrilateral A, Q, E, R, A, this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is 90 degrees because we are only drawing the normals here. So as they are going to be 90 degrees, you can take now angle A plus angle A Q E plus angle E plus angle A R E is equal to 360 degrees. So in this you will take this as 90 because it's a normal drawn there. This is also 90 because they are also normal is drawn here. So A is equal A plus E is equal to 360 degrees. These two are going to be 90 plus 90 which is going to be 180. So therefore we can write A plus E is equal to 180. A is equal to 180 minus E. Okay. Let this be considered as equation number 3 here. Okay. So uh, if you take these two e equations they are having R and just same. So we can write like this. 1 equal to 3. From this we will get R1 plus R2 is equal to A which is taken as equation number 4. Now let us take here. Here if you observe substituting 4 into so substitute this value here you'll be getting delta is equal to i1 plus i2 minus instead of r1 plus r2 you'll write a so you can write i1 plus i2 is equal to a plus delta let this be imagined to be equation number five here so according to uh, angle of minimum deviation what do you mean by angle of minimum deviation if you draw a symmetry here then this angle delta will become delta will become delta m when you draw a line at symmetry and angle of deviation is going to be minimum deviation then we consider that at that place of minimum deviation if you draw a symmetrical line both angles are going to be same both refracting angles are going to be same incidence and emergence angles are going to be same okay so we can write now at minimum deviation if you observe delta will become delta m symmetry has occurred then you will write i1 equal to i2 equal to i r1 equal to r2 equal to r then what happens here so equation 4 if you observe you will be getting r plus r is equal to a that means uh, r is equal to a by 2 we are getting okay similarly what happens to this equation number 5 okay i1 i2 equal to same here so you can write here i plus i is equal to a plus delta m because delta will become delta m here so 2i is equal to a plus delta m i is equal to a plus delta m by 2 so we got the value of i we got the value of r also according to snell's law we can write mu is equal to sin i by sin r which is nothing but sin a plus delta m by 2 whole divided by sin a by 2 so we got the refractive index of a prism 
in a very very simple and shortcut. So we will discuss the most expected questions of PRISM. This is one question which I have found uh, two to three times repeated in the previous year problems of NEET and also mains. How are you going to solve this problem? Let us see here now. Uh, this is a silvered PRISM. Uh, side AC is going to be silvered here. Light ray enters from rarer to denser. It bends towards the normal. But the thing is, the light ray goes and strikes the side AC and again retraces back. What does it mean actually? Retracing back means uh, in which way it is going to travel, in the same way it is going to retrace back here. What is the meaning of that? The meaning of that is it is going to strike the side AC exactly making at 90 degrees. Then only retracing back is possible. Then what happens here? That means light is traveling along the normal here. If it is a normal at this place, along the normal light ray is going to travel. With this it is understood that if it is I2 or if it is R2, both are going to be zero here. Both are going to be zero here. As I have explained in the previous uh, concept uh, that R1 plus R2 is equal to A. As R2 is going to be zero, R1 is considered to be A here. Okay. So you know that according to Snell's law, we can write mu is equal to sine I1 by sine r1 okay sine i1 by sine r1 then here uh, you know that r1 is going to be a so we can write sine i1 by sine a so with this it is understood that sine i is equal to mu times of sine a but for thin prism if you observe you can write i1 for thin prism if angles are very very small we can write sine theta approximately equal to theta then if it is sin i, we can take it as i. If it is sin a, we can take it as a. So these type of problems are most frequently asked in previous year meet. This is one example. Thank you very much.